can we talk about the Torah? Yes. What is it? And uh, is it the literal word of God? <laughs> um, Easy questions so, today. Yeah. Uh, well, the Torah is the five books of Moses written in Hebrew. Um, I, like most, I think, modern rabbis, non-Orthodox or non-literalist rabbis will tell you that it's a product of human beings. Um, and uh, I believe that they are inspired by God, but it's clear to me that it's a human product. And I think that people who study modern biblical criticism, it's really hard to study modern, modern it, criticism it gives a wrong impression. I would say modern scholarship on the Bible and not appreciate the fact that it, it even has levels of language. I mean, it's just like if you read today um, somebody writing like Shakespeare, you would say this isn't it's it's like English has developed. It's different. It's not the English we speak today. And if you study the Bible and you know Hebrew well enough, you even see that this was written over hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, it is a holy book, and I like the idea that it is what what you say in Hebrew is Torah min Hashemayim and not Torah mi Sinai. That is, the Torah is from heaven, but it's not from Sinai. So it has its origin beyond us. But it has things in it that I think, and this is one of the um, one of the things that was a huge controversy at my congregation when I started to do same sex marriages. There are some people who try to argue that the the Torah does not forbid them. Whether it does or not, it seems to me we understand things that were not understood in the ancient world about gender and sexuality, and so. So you think that. In the scripture, in the words, you can find the kind of spirit that supports the idea of gay marriage. Well, that's, yes, that's my, my argument is that you criticize the Torah by the Torah. That is, it gives you the understanding that you use to evaluate its own claims. Um, and, and I think that Judaism, by the way, has always done that because it's clear that there are things in the Torah that the rabbis changed, altered, grew, expanded, diminished. Um, I think that's what it's, it is to be part of a living tradition. Yeah, you wrote in your book, Why Faith Matters, quote, Walt Whitman wrote that in order for there to be a great books, there must be great readers. For a book to remain powerful throughout generations, it cannot have a single meaning. Scripture, like great poetry, is not reducible to other words. That is, one cannot paraphrase paraphrase it and capture the totality of its meaning. So how the heck do you capture the meaning of the words in scripture? Is it an ongoing process through the centuries? Yes, is that exactly so. It is? It's a continual conversation of sages, scholars, readers, strugglers, seekers, mystics, visionaries, all of them making a contribution. I mean, I write a weekly Torah column for the Jerusalem Post. Now, what is there left to say? But every week, what I do is I start opening books and seeing what people say, and it starts to percolate, and you realize that you're entering this conversation that's been going on for thousands of years with, with remarkable minds, and it, and it constantly fertile in new insights. So yes. That's what it is to be part of a tradition. Yeah, why do people keep uh, writing love poems? We should have figured right, out exactly. love by this, right. point, uh, right. by this point already. I use the analogy sometimes of diet books. If any <laughs> diet worked, there would be one book. There'd be one book and you'd be done. <laughs>